Uh, we have a 3D diagram here and the first question 7.1 is saying show that x uh, x is here is equals to 5 divided by 2 cos theta right uh, let's look at triangle a d c right where x lies on triangle a d c the only thing we know is that this angle here is 90 and then this angle here is 2 theta and then we have x there we don't have any other information but then if you look at triangle a d b right uh, we have theta here and then we have five right a value here and then here we have 90. so what you want to do in this kind of questions you want to start with the triangle that has the most information and move towards to the triangle you're interested in clearly triangle adb has the most information compared to triangle adc so let's start from triangle abd and move towards triangle adc how do we possibly do that triangle abd and triangle adc they share line ad so let's find line ad using triangle abd and then from line ad we then find a way to find the x so here on triangle abd uh, what we can say we can see that sine of theta is equals to opposite divided by hypotenuse right so we're gonna have sine of theta being equals to opposite is ad and then the hypotenuse is five right so if we cross multiply we get ad is equals to five sine of theta so now let's find a way to use ad to find x if we had the length of dc then we would just use pythagoras right because we have an angle of 90 here but then unfortunately we don't have so we're gonna use trig ratios so we can say sine of 2 theta in triangle adc right will be equals to opposite divided by hypotenuse what is the opposite here the opposite is a d divided by the hypotenuse which is x so again if we cross multiply we get a d is equals to x multiplied by sine 2 theta so now we have two equations for a d if we equate these two equations we're going to be able to find x so we can say now uh, 5 sine of theta is equals to x sine of 2 theta so we divide both sides by sine of 2 theta right we're gonna get x is equals to 5 sine of theta divided by sine 2 theta this is not exactly what you're looking for but then if we use the trig identity sine of 2 theta is equals to sine theta multiplied by cos theta then we can possibly get there so now we're gonna get x is equals to 5 of sine theta divided by 2 sine theta and cos of theta so sine theta and sine theta cancel out and we are only left with x is equals to 5 divided by 2 cos of theta and that's how you do 7.1 and then 7.2 says calculate the length of bc if it is given that angle bac is 112 degrees and theta is equals to 30 degrees so let's look at bac right uh, so we have an angle here bac which is said to be uh, 112 degrees so on triangle abc we have angle bac we have the length of ac right which is x and we just calculated it and then we have ab which is five we know from definition that the cosine rules is that a squared is equals to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a right so a is the side you're interested in b and c are the other two sides of the triangle and a is the angle which is opposite to the side you're looking for so if we're looking for bc a here will be 112 degrees right so let's apply the same idea so we can say that bc squared right 
will be equals to a b squared will be equals to a b squared plus a c squared minus 2 multiplied by a b multiplied by a c cos of b a c so this will be equals to what is a b a b is 5 right so we have 5 squared plus a c squared ac is x right and we know what x is equals to so here we're gonna have uh, 5 divided by 2 cos of theta but we are given theta it is said to be 30 degrees so we can substitute 30 degrees here and then minus 2 ab we say saying that ab is 5 and then ac ac is 5 divided by 2 cos of 30 degrees and then uh, cos of BAC which is 112 degrees right this is BC squared and then you will find that uh, BC squared is equals to 44.147 and then if you take square roots on both sides you get uh, BC is equals to 6.64 units Let's determine CD, the distance between the two anchors in terms of age. So what you want to do in this kind of problem, you will realize it uh, towards the end, is that you have to start uh, with the triangle that has the most information and move towards the triangle that has the least information. So let's look at our uh, line CD. So here's CD here, right? And then apart from CD, we have an angle to theta here, uh, which is, I just highlighted, right? And then we are told that uh, AC and AD are equals to each other, right? Uh, so this angle here should be equals to uh, this angle. So let's just, you know, go ahead and calculate those, tri those angles. So we're saying that in triangle uh, ADC, uh, we have two theta, uh, plus uh, angle ADC plus uh, angle ACD being equals to 180 degrees. But then because uh, ADC and ACD are equals to each other, uh, we can just say that uh, ADC is equals to uh, ACD, the true triangles will be close to each other since the lines are equal to each other. So now we're going to have 2 theta uh, plus 2 ADC being equal to 180 degrees. So now we have um, 2 ADC uh, being equal to 180 degrees minus 2 theta. So if you divide both sides by 2, you get ADC is equal to 90 degrees. Uh, minus theta. So now we have this angle here, uh, which is 90 degrees minus theta. Uh, this angle here is also 90 degrees minus uh, theta. Let's not forget our aim. We want to determine uh, line DC, right? Uh, in terms of H. Uh, so what can we do here? We can use the sine rule, right? Uh, we can say that uh, sine of A uh, divided by the side A will be equals to sine of uh, B divided by the side B. We're still in triangle ADC, right? So let's take our sine of 2 theta. So we're saying that sine of 2 theta uh, divided by the opposite side, right? Uh, DC will be equals to, uh, let's take this angle here, uh, 90 minus theta, right? You're going to see why I'm saying we should take that one. Then we're going to get sine of 90 minus theta uh, divided by the opposite side. The opposite side is AC. So if we cross multiply, we get uh, DC multiplied by uh, sine of 90 minus theta. That is just cos of theta, right? And then that is equals to AC uh, sine of 2 theta. Uh, so DC is equals to AC sine of 2 theta, uh, everything divided by uh, cos of theta. But we know fully well from trig, right, uh, that sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 
sine of theta cos of theta. So we can just substitute that in. We're going to get uh, dc is equal to ac uh, 2 sine of theta cos of theta everything divided by uh, cos of theta. Right? And then now it's easy to see that cos of theta and cos of theta cancel out. So now we have uh, dc is equal to uh, basically 2ac uh, sine of theta, right? But then we're supposed to determine dc in terms of h, right? So how are we going to do that? Now, this is what I was talking about. Starting from the triangle that has the most information, moving to the triangle that has the least information. So now we're looking for the length of AC. So let me just highlight um, AC here for you. Uh, we're looking for AC, right? So to find AC, we're going to regard uh, triangle ABC. In triangle ABC, uh, we have 90 here, uh, yeah, we have an angle theta, so we can use that angle. Uh, we can say that sine of theta is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Here you can see now our hypotenuse is going to be AC, right? So we're basically done with the problem. So uh, sine of theta will just stay as sine of theta because that angle is theta, right? So we're going to have sine of theta uh, being equal to the opposite, which is h, divided by the hypotenuse, which is ac. And then if we solve for ac, we get ac is equal to h divided by sine theta. Uh, for the faint-hearted ones, uh, what we did here, we cross-multiplied, we got ac sine of theta is equal to h, so ac will be h divided by sine of theta for the faint added ones. So now that we have ac, right, uh, we can substitute ac back into dc, right? Uh, so let me just uh, do it there so that, yeah, uh, you can see what I'm talking about. So now we're going to have um, dc is equal to 2 multiplied by ac. AC, we see in that uh, it's H divided by sine of theta, right? So we have H divided by sine of theta and then multiply by sine of theta. Uh, sine of theta and sine of theta, uh, they cancel out. So DC is equal to 2H. 8.1 is saying that uh, let's prove that QS is equal to 5 tan of x right so let's go ahead and look at our sketch and see what we have here so we're looking for q s right i'm just highlighting it now in green and then uh, q s is in triangle q s r and then in triangle q s t right uh, but then you can see that between triangle q s r and triangle q t s uh, we have a lot of information in QSR, right? So it will be beneficial for us to use uh, QSR instead of using uh, QTS, right? So let me just highlight triangle QSR and then we can uh, solve our problem, right? So right now, uh, the thing we started with, uh, we mentioned in that uh, we are interested in triangle QSR, right? So now let's look at the information uh, we have in triangle QSR and how we can use it. We want QS, we want uh, this side here, right? And then opposite that side, uh, we have this angle, right? So now I'm thinking, okay, I can use the sine rule. And then we have the angle QSR, this angle here, which is given. And then we have a side opposite to it. So uh, the bias is confirmed now. We can definitely use the sine rule. So the sine rule is saying that uh, sine of A, uh, divided by the opposite sign to that angle, right? This is equal to sine of B divided by the side opposite that angle. So in our sketch here, let's say uh, sine of X, right? So if we say sine of X, uh, which side is opposite X? Uh, that is QS, right? It's exactly what uh, we are looking for. And then uh, from there, uh, that will be equals to, uh, in the same triangle, we have sine of 90 plus x, and then divided by the side opposite that. The side opposite that is qr, right, uh, which is equals to 5. So we're going to have 5. Uh, now let's cross multiply, right? If we cross multiply, we're going to get uh, 5 multiplied by sine of x being equals to 
qs multiplied by sine of 90 plus x sine of 90 plus x uh, that is uh, cos x right and then now in order to find qs we can divide both sides by cos of x so if we do that uh, we're gonna get qs being equals to 5 multiplied by sine of x divided by cos of x and this will be equals to 5 uh, multiply by so we know that sine of x divided by cos of x that will be tan of x and it's exactly what we are required to prove now we can look at 8.2 right let me just clear a few things on the sketch so that we can have a bit of clarity now when we look at uh, 8.2 the question is saying that let's prove that the length of qt is equals to 10 sine of x so we want qt to be equals to uh, let me just write it here 10 sine of x right and then uh, what information do we have we have qs so we know that qs is 5 uh, tan of x but then we are told that is indicated in our sketch that qs is equals to ts right so here for ts we are also going to have 5 uh, tan of x now that we are aware of the fact that qs is equals to ts then if this angle here is x this angle here should also be x right so um what will this angle here be 180 minus 2x right sum of angles in triangle so we can say that uh, that will be 180 minus uh, 2x right uh, let's not lose the plot of uh, what we do in here we want qt to be close to 10 sine of x we have this angle here which is opposite qt and then uh, apart from that we can use this angle and this side or this angle and this side it won't really matter because those two are equals to each other right so now again uh, we can stick to the gospel we've been preaching so we can say that sine of a divided by a is equals to sine of b uh, divided by b so now we're going to say that sine of uh, so we say that that angle is 180 minus 2x right so we're going to say that sine of uh, 180 minus 2x divided by uh, the side opposite that angle which is qt so here we have qt will be equals to uh, so we can take uh, this angle here so we're gonna say that sine of x divided by uh, the side opposite that angle which is st right uh, that is 5 tan of x right even if you take the other angle you get the same thing because those two sides are uh, equals to uh, each other right so let's carry on and see what we can do here right so sine of 180 minus 2x right so uh, we move in into the second quadrant and we know fully well that our sine is positive on the second quadrant so we're gonna have um, sine of 2x divided by qt being equals to sine of x um, divided by 5 tan uh, x so now we can cross multiply if we do that we get qt multiplied by sine of x will be equals to 5 uh, tan of x multiplied by sine 2x right so uh, dividing both sides by sine x in attempt to find qt when i have qt is equals to 5 tan of x multiplied by sine of 2x divided by uh, sine of x right so now uh, we have tan of x which we can change to uh, sine divided by cos right uh, but then we also have sine of 2x right which we can change to 2 sine of x cos of x right uh, that's a identity so if we do that we're gonna have qt being equals to 5 uh, instead of tan of x we have sine of x divided by cos of x multiplied by 2 sine of x cos of x and then we divide in everything by uh, sine of x it's easy to see now that uh, sine of x and sine of x there we go and then we have cos of x uh, canceling out with cos of x so qt now we just left with um, 5 multiplied by sine of x multiplied by 2 
and uh, just like uh, what we're looking for qt is equals to 10 sine of x right and then now we can uh, conclude by doing 8.3 so 8.3 is saying that uh, let's look for the area of triangle TQR. So we're looking for the area of triangle TQR, right? So before we even look at our sketch, let's talk about the area first. So the area of uh, some triangle TQR, right, uh, will always be equals to uh, 1 divided by 2 side 1 multiplied by side 2 multiplied by sine of the angle right uh the problem is here with this angle which angle are we talking about it is the angle sandwiched by the two sides right the angle sandwiched by the two sides so in this uh, triangle tqr uh, they're telling us that uh the angle tqr is uh 70 degrees right and then they see that x is equal to 25. so now let's pay our attention um to our sketch so this angle here tqr they saying that it is 70 uh, degrees right so in order to find uh the area of this triangle we can use uh, the two sides that sandwich that angle which two sides sandwich that angle qt and qr right so we can say that uh, the area of that triangle will be equals to a half multiplied by qt multiply by qr and then uh, multiply by sine of uh, t q r and then if we do that we're gonna get a half multiplied by qt so what is qt qt is 10 uh sine of x right but then x is given to us now as 25 degrees so we can just substitute that 25 degrees multiplied by uh qr QR, uh, it was initially given to us. We know that it is uh, 5, right? So that will be multiplied by 5. And then multiply by sine of TQR. TQR is 70 degrees, right? So we just put that there. And if you put that in your calculator, you'll get 9.93 uh, some units that we don't know squared. We have points L, M, N on the same horizontal plane. KL is a vertical tower. And then the angle of elevation of K from M is Q. And then NLM is equal to P. NL is equal to NM is equal to D. And KL is equal to H. And the first question, 7.1, is saying let's determine the size of L and M in terms of P. So let's go to our sketch and identify L and M. So L and M is this angle here. And we're supposed to determine the size of that angle in terms of P. Uh, P is the angle NLM, right? This angle here is angle P, right? And then I want you to realize something here. We are told that LN is equal to NM. If NM and NL are equals to each other, then this angle here is also equals to p because if those two sides are equal then those two angles should also be equal so now we're gonna have um l n m uh plus n l m plus n m l being equals to 180 degrees the sum of angles in a triangle uh, but what is L and M? L and M is what we're interested in, right? And then what is NLM? Uh, this angle here, uh, we have just said that it is equal to P, right? So we have P plus uh, NML, uh, this angle here. We've also said that that angle will also be equal to P because line NL is equal to line NM. So plus P is equal to 180 degrees so now you can see that l and m will be equal to 180 degrees uh, minus 2p uh, now we can move to the next question the next question says uh, let's prove that lm is equal to uh, d multiplied by sine of 2p divided by sine of 
uh, P. Uh, let me just uh, clear the sketch so that we can navigate with ease, right? You can see in the statement that is supposed to prove that there's a lot of sign there. So what I would try apply first is the sign rule. And then if the sign rule doesn't work, then I can try use other rules we have, right? But then just because we have a lot of sign in that statement, I'm going to run to the sign rule straight. So we want... Uh, to find the length of lm so lm uh, is this side here right uh, yes lm and then it's opposite angle l and m and then another side that is included in the statement we're supposed to prove is uh, nm right uh, which is equals to d and then it's opposite uh, this angle so let's use the sign rule and see if that will work so 7.2 uh, we say in that uh, sine of L and M uh, divided by uh, the opposite side, right? L M will be equals to uh, sine of um, N L M uh, divided by N M. We're using the sine rule that essentially says that uh, sine of A uh, divided by A is equals to uh, sine of B divided by b right uh, a is the side opposite angle capital letter a and then small letter b is the side opposite uh, angle b as you can see uh the side that is opposite angle l and m is lm right and then the side that is opposite angle n l m is n m let's carry on uh, with our problem so what is the size of l and m uh, we calculated the size of L and M in 7.1, right? It's 180 minus 2P. So we're going to have sine of uh, 180 minus 2P uh, divided by uh, LM, right? And this will be equals to uh, sine of NLM, uh, this angle here, right? Which is P. So we're going to have sine of P divided by NM. NM is D, right? Uh, so what can we do here? We can cross multiply. So we're gonna have uh, d multiplied by uh, instead of writing it as sine of 180 minus 2p, we can just write it as sine of 2p because we know that uh, on the second quadrant, uh, sine is positive, right? So we're gonna have sine of 2p, and then this will be equals to lm multiplied by sine of p. Now we divide both sides by sine of p. We're gonna get d multiplied by sine of 2p uh, divided by sine of p is equals to lm and we have proved exactly what we are required to prove right and then 7.3 says uh, if you can do that then also show us that h is equals to 2d uh, cos of p uh, tan of uh, q so what is h in our equation we are told that kl is equals to h right so here in place of kl we can put um h right and then we have angle uh, q here so if we use a uh, ton of theta is equals to opposite divided by adjacent uh, then we're gonna have ton of q and then we're gonna have our opposite being h and then lm being uh, what we just calculated in 7.2 right uh, so let's go ahead and you know see if that idea can work so we're saying that uh, tan of theta is equals to y divided by x right uh, but then here we're not using theta but we're using q so we're gonna have tan of q uh, being equals to uh, the opposite which is h uh, divided by uh, x right our x is our uh, line lm uh, which is d multiplied by sine of 2p uh, divided by sine of p right uh, we see in this because in 7.2 we prove that lm is equals to d sine of 2p divided by sine of p right and then uh, for the sake of clarity we can only use tan theta is equals to y divided by x if we have a right angle triangle right Clearly in our sketch it's indicated that this is a right angle triangle. So let's go ahead and cross multiply, right? So we're gonna get h multiplied by one is equals to tan of q multiplied by uh, d 
sine of 2p uh, divided by sine of uh, p right uh, but then in the statement we are supposed to prove uh, you can see here that we don't have uh, sine of 2p right so let's change that sine of 2p to something else right uh, what we can change it to we can say that sine of uh, 2p uh, will be equals to 2 sine of p cos of p uh, that's the trig identity right and then if you do that and if we do that you will see that uh, this, this sine of p in the numerator will cancel out with the sine of p in the uh, denominator and then cos of p also appears so this trig identity is the one we're supposed to use so we're going to have h being equals to uh, tan of q uh, multiplied by d in place of sine of p we put in 2 in place of sine of 2p we put in 2 sine of p cos of p and then uh, we divide in everything by uh, sine of p and then sine of p and sine of p cancel out we have h being equals to tan of q multiplied by d 2 cos of p yeah but then we can write that nicer right you can <laughs> see it looks so messed up so we can write this as uh, 2d uh, cos of p uh, tan of q